Welcome back to Crown Script Okay. Wishing you a good morning. Happy morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. It's nice Tuesday, I believe. Yes, so happy Tuesday. Hope everyone's having the best Tuesday possible. Let's get into live stream right over here. Bitcoin having a little bit of price action, but uh, a few new ideas today actually because of the price action in the last, I'd say, 12 to 24 hours has actually revealed a few paths for Bitcoin. And I feel like we will be seeing resolution on an overall uh, bigger move relatively soon so let's get into it right over here bitcoin still being uh being held back by this area right over here i think best shown on the four hour dildo time frame uh this descending trend line is essentially governing our lower highs getting all three of them perfectly and you know three touches does make a trend as the saying goes and that is uh that is in play as long as we are essentially respecting 40 50 ish area as resistance meaning closing four hour dildos below there on the higher time frames it does look to me a little bit more um a little bit more open actually as uh, you are getting a good cross right over here on your uh, moving averages but 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 volume and overall shape of this is extremely corrective so this is what i really wanted to get into during this video and with the price action of the last uh, i'd say 24 hours I believe I believe it's pretty safe to say now that this is that this is almost confirmed as a corrective move. Uh, again, don't see an inverted head and shoulders in this. This is non-inverted head and shoulders. Uh, did see a an, uh, an ascending triangle or symmetrical triangle right over here that broke out to the upside. But as you know, this is what I mean by when you're in a bearish market. And again, the trend has not changed. We're still making lower highs um, for the last over a year now. Uh, uh, this is what I mean by I don't like playing bullish things in a bearish market just because when you're looking at this guy right over here, which was a nice ascending triangle, and you can make a measure move on that guy, uh, that would be pointing you all the way towards here, our next kind of like 42, uh, uh, around 4200 ish area. So looking at that one, you know, yes, you can have a measure move pointing all the way up there, but when you are create, trading overall counter trend, that's what I mean by bears can come out at any given moment in time because it's in a bearish market, it is their prerogative. And yes, I do not believe the bottom's in. Um, I hope that I make this very, very clear. And it, it, it is very encouraging to me and it's very motivating to me um, to speak with the people who I, I feel like really put an effort into understanding what I'm saying. Um, that sounds very arrogant and very lofty. I don't mean it like that. I just mean, you know, there. when it comes to trading, when it comes to technical analysis, you have to present everything equally. But my, I hope my opinion does kind of shine through at some points in times um, because people are asking me, am I bullish now? I'm, I'm not bullish, guys. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bullish at all. Um, doesn't mean doesn't mean that we can't have some rallies in here uh here and there um but overall you know as as long as we're still respecting this descending trend uh trend line right over here you know I, I look at this actually right now as a rising channel which does look about right to me the volume characteristics as this uh, as a rising channel would make sense we have that nice falling off in volume uh again the price action being more corrective than than breakout uh which would suggest that you know while you, while we might have another run up at the uh, at the top side of this resistance trend line somewhere you know whether it's 40 50 maybe even get a wick all the way up to almost 4100 um probably gonna be a sell for me and again technical analysis trading um you know it's, it's all about going for this fiscal setup so when i'm looking at this right over here i will be taking a trade uh next um next rally i will be taking a uh, a short right now i'm pretty much cash and also to add on to what i was saying before for the people ask me about if i was long after yesterday please understand that that was it was an accidental position. I got hit on a stop, and then I and then I announced during the stream, yes, I am long. It was like literally like a couple of bitcoins. Understand that I'm also like as soon as soon as we uh, as, as soon as the stream ended, I did close that. It took like I don't know like a ten fifteen dollar loss, whatever it might be. Again, that's fine. That's trading, but I I hope that people didn't take that as a signal. And that's why I always say I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. Hopefully it and it sounds like it does shine through um, for most people uh, of what I'm actually doing. So anyways, um, yeah, uh, lower time frames right over here. This is a whole big nasty thicket of resistance is what you can kind of look at this guy as. Uh, while I do think that we probably get another try up, maybe it gets to, you know, 40, 20, maybe even 40, 50 ish area. Uh, probably going to be a sell for me and I will be trying to trade out around there. Managing risk above and key fucking point on this managing risk above like 40, 60, 40, 70 ish area. Um, as always, you know, just because you have a setup in doesn't mean it's going to play out 100 percent. We already got it or, or sorry, um, I wasn't I wasn't awake for this, so I can't say that we got that that uh, that we got Got this but if you did play the break of this guy right over here 4,000 has spoken about on the uh, stream last night well you already got that kind of first dive down back to this 39 30 ish area right over here that did fill the CME gaps um, uh, right over here I mean just does that really count eh. 
a little bit of an artist size is needed for an interpretation on this one, but uh, maybe, maybe it does still have kind of a magnet going down around here. That was not exactly the reaction that I'm looking for. Um, but interestingly enough, uh, if price action does get back down around here uh, below 3,900 on CMEs, yeah, that would also be a nice short signal for me as well. So whichever one happens first, I'll take a trade off that. Um, but uh, but lower time frames do look like we want to give it another try right over here. People are going to be calling this a bull flag. Um, it's a little bit too long and a little bit too droopy to be a bull flag. Uh, yeah, sometimes you do get these weird like kind of patterns in crypto. But I think also a lot of people who have been tuning in this content, you know, yes, I will call out patterns and whatnot, but I don't really play patterns myself. Uh, I like triangles. Triangles are good. Um, <laughs> triangles are great. But <laughs> but as far as like other patterns go, it just seems to me like they're a little bit too easy to be painted by by big market movers. And it's just a, it's it's like the easiest way to fake out the most amount of people. Everyone's looking at an inverted head. And shoulders I, again i don't believe it is when the volume characters are wrong the shape's wrong it just everything it's, you don't even have the fucking right shoulder and that's a problem as well you know you got quasimodo over here and he's missing a left shoulder that could be an issue but you know looking at this looking at this right here yeah it does look on the lower time frames like we'll probably try to give it another run up over here people are going to be calling this a bull flag they're going to be saying oh my god it's a bull flag it has a target of 4250 or whatever it might be and i think that's actually probably where it will be which would line up with our prior high um but I, I think what's a little bit more likely to happen is you get stopped somewhere between about 40 30 and 40 50 ish area which is where i'm going to be getting in a position um assuming that we actually do uh, make a run up but you can see that all of our lower time frame also it is are starting to switch around right now uh four hour with a fresh cross to the downside eight hour with uh actually still gaining momentum to the upside fair uh funnily enough uh 12 hour getting up there as well what about 10 hour yeah 10 hour getting up there as well uh but they are but why he, he here's what i'm kind of looking at for these guys when you do get towards the more you know critical zone to the upside and you are in a corrective pattern those typically are the good cells and that's really where i do want to be using my uh my stokes for especially with my settings um let's see if the uh if the jewels if the jewel is saying anything right now yeah jewel actually time oh my god the jewel is again the jewel the jewel is still the best indicator that i know of um Actually, actually timed you sell perfectly at uh, before the last drop, um, but uh, mm, I I feel like we might get another punch back into this for for the for the perfect one. But again, not confirmed uh, at all just yet. Still got to wait on that one. That one's gonna obviously take a long time as each and every one of these is four hour dildos. Um, but uh, more importantly speaking, we do have this rising trend line going on down around here, right? This rising trend line currently coming in around 3850-ish area, and we'll be, you know, we'll be kind of meeting the 200 exponential and this nice horizontal trend line that Bitcoin broke out of at around 3900 in the next couple of days. Now, the key factor with this is that if this does get taken out, immediately I do start looking, I mean, immediately I, I start looking much further down and I do believe that Bitcoin is going to start to fill out this space and uh, really start painting in this descending triangle that uh, that you can see much more easily on GBTC. Although GBTC has broken out, confirmed a breakout. So fair enough. Maybe I need to reassess what I'm saying right there. I haven't looked at this today, so this is actually fresh for me. And this does make me want to reconsider a few things, but just reaching your prior high right over here, well, actually taking it out. Uh, volume volume decent on, on the breakout. Okay. Let's see. What do the oscillators say? Do we have anything to be aware of over here? Um, RSI looks fine. Uh, what about a higher time frame? What about like a 12 hour? What do we have over here? Yeah. Oh, uh, overall, um, GBDC, while it is right out of resistance right now, um, looking better and you know putting this con putting this into confluence this would be the more bullish take on it so let's actually explore the more bullish view of this so um i don't believe that we have a uh, a bull flag going on right now but what i do think the bulls could be looking at is something like this the volume would be a little bit more consistent with this base well i guess that just kind of lines up with that with that trend line but basically just creating a massive uh, uh symmetrical triangle right over here the volume characters do work out they uh yeah that they, they could work out so let's go see what this would um what this would entail if we were to make a measure move off this baby and let's put this guy right over here where is this guy going to or no let's just go to a higher time frame how about that and then we can scroll on out and where would this be going towards? Yeah, so this would be pointing towards the uh, 4650-ish area, 12-hour, 200 exponential, kind of in the thicket of that area as well. And it would kind of be around the 618 Fibonacci retracement for the overall move downwards. Now, 
obviously we just saw on um we, we just saw on gbc that that actually has broken out of this guy right over here if you were to make a relation on this and i believe with the premium on gbc that would that would suggest a price of around 44 or 4500 something like that something like that so could we have a path forward to the upside i mean certainly it's uh, uh, certainly possible but again i would be going off of spot charts uh instead of gbtc because there has been a few discrepancies in them although gbtc still you know still pretty good of a uh, uh of a leading indicator um over the past year but uh the last the last half month has been a little bit hairy uh gbtc making lows when spot exchanges have not and um we're just gonna have to wait and find out for that one so again if you know if you're trading spot exchanges you can't you you got to trade spot exchanges right your liquidation price is going to be going off of those uh, off of those prices. Um, anyways, 12 hour 100 exponential still holding back price action as well. Um, and what do we have? What else do we have on the 12 hour? Do we have anything to look at? What about DMI? Um, fading its fading its signal already, but not really. Yeah, not not really too many things to not really too many things to report on on that front. You know, when looking at when looking for um when uh when essentially looking for clues within the price action right now you know there certainly are some but price action first so i, th I think it'd be very difficult to get bullish until bitcoin can like close a four hour dildo at, at the very least uh minimally speaking um above this 40 50 ish area if you do if you do that then then yes we can talk about uh perhaps a measured move up to that 4600 area that would also kind of align with the measured move um from potential uh descending broadening wedge that we look at over here on the um, on our GDAX charts. So again, I do want to represent the bullish case. I'm not leaning towards it to be very, very clear. I think that this, uh, a lot of people asked me about that yesterday as well. I, I'm, I'm not leaning towards this. While, while it does actually have a measure move pointing you all the way towards, what is this about? Um, is that 5,000? Um, yeah, I guess that's 5,000. Um, I'm not leaning towards it. I'm actually not leaning towards it. What I think is more likely to happen is is if is if it were to break out of this area right here, probably get stopped at one of our next resistance points. We're gonna have a very obvious one and a very nasty one right around 42.50, um, and then another big one right here, right around 45.50. Also gonna align with that uh, cyan 100 exponential as well. So a lot of things kind of to be aware of on the way. And, and you know, even if you did get the breakout. One of those areas is likely to kind of be it for me. Um, again, still still in the heavy grips of a bearish market, and this this price action right here having a very corrective tone to it as well. So, yeah, got to be looking at that. And um, you know, I feel like a lot of people are bullish right now, and that's that's also a scary thing as well. Um, mainly retailers are bullish. I, I I don't really see like bigger accounts being bullish. Um, you know, the people who think that the bottom is in or like the people who bought at 6,000, that's also a, that's also a trend that I've noticed as well. The, the, the same people who think that the bottom is in now are the same people who thought that the bottom was in at 6,000. Jesus Christ, I almost kicked my mic over there. Let me sh just make sure that it's working. All right, there we go. Good. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, I uh, just want to get that out. Anyways, uh, if this were to break out to the downside, though, more importantly speaking, you can make that same measure move and point it all the way down around here. And where does that point down towards? I mean, assuming that it happens somewhere right over here. Oh, that nice 3250-ish area. So again, I, I am still leaning toward that idea of Bitcoin essentially just, you know, painting in another descending triangle. I think this is best shown on this chart right over here, our GDAX chart. And again, just take this guy down to my not even straight line over there. Uh, but something like this is kind of what I'm leaning towards and let's go right in over there and bitcoin basically just painted in this area um again this is an opinion thing i don't trade my opinion but it is interesting and as long as we are respecting this resistance right here that is my general disposition as essentially you do have just you know in the most basic basic ways lower highs uh same thing that you did at six thousand area and again that also brings up the the comment that you know i don't think while i do believe that bitcoin is going to be making some lower lows below this 3200 area i don't believe that um i i think it's going to take a long time to do so you know long time interpret that as you will but i'd say you know a month two months three months what you know whatever the fuck it might be it's not it's not happening today or tomorrow or anything like that very unlikely you know you can't you shouldn't say this you sh i shouldn't say stuff like that it's very immature but i'd say it's very unlikely to happen um it's probably it's, it's not gonna happen um <laughs> but uh but the second that uh but just like you know 
when it, when we were looking at the six thousand level right over here, everyone, you know, the 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 bears and the analysts were telling you that that this area was going to break. Well, you know, I, we could see the same thing, but it wasn't time to take a trade on this until you actually broke six thousand area right over here. Well, it's going to be the same case for the thirty two fifty ish area right over here, which also does align very very nicely and very very elegantly with our two hundred simple moving average on the weekly total time frame. If we can actually get it up and take off the ten, oh my God, it's like a, it's an earthquake over here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, but the 200 simple on the weekly also kind of, uh, you know, suggesting price action um, leveling out right around here as well, as well as our, our, our nice uh, horizontal level. So, again, if you want to make trading easier on yourself, you, if you're a long term trader, uh, this is kind of what I'd be doing. Again, it's not financial advice, not a financial advisor, but <laughs> but, uh, you know, as, as as long as Bitcoin's above the 200 simple, don't really want to be directional short. As long as Bitcoin is below the 200 exponential, really don't want to be directional long. And that's and more importantly, I should say both opening and closing dildos below the 200 exponential. So, you know, even if Bitcoin were to close this week above the 200 exponential, it'd still have to go a full week of both opening and closing above that before I would really drastically change my tune. And again, I'm, I'm looking for three things to kind of change around my overall opinion on the market. I want to see first higher high on the daily that would be good that would be a start you haven't done that in over a year there that's one uh number two is is what we just talked about a weekly a weekly deal both opening and closing above the 200 exponential um and then number three and most important although we'd probably be able to to define that beforehand and honestly the 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 uh the the uh oh my god sorry Sorry, that is so embarrassing. But the weekly, um, the weekly would drastically change my opinion to begin with. Um, uh, but the third and final would be closing above six thousand. The, the the traditional breakdown area right over here. By the way, Bitcoin's rallying right now. That would completely change my my opinion around, and I would immediately search for some long term longs. As again, I am long term bullish on Bitcoin, but uh, oof, uh, forty fifteen. Not bad right over there. Uh, not not bad of a move. I'm still looking somewhere right around here. Let's see. Um, hmm. Do I want to enter in on this? What are what, what are we saying over here? Eh, I, th I think that we can still get a little bit more on this. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to hit it. I'd like it to hit one of these uh, one of these areas first, uh, first and foremost, before taking a position. Um, but uh, I will I, I will take a risk reward trade on this guy right over here. Again, managing my risk above like 40, 60, 40, 70 ish area. That's what I'm looking for. Of course, if it takes that area out, I take that out of the position. I take the small loss and then reassess and perhaps I mean. Would you get long if, if this if this area gets taken out? Yeah, I guess I would. I guess I would. There's really not much stopping you from about another two hundred dollar move after that. So, yeah, kind of worth it. Um, okay. Anyways, let's go check out Mr. Buterol because uh, Mr. Buterol is quite interesting to me. And he has been leading the market and event driven does make me very apprehensive with what's going on right here. Uh, putting in what looks to be a, an ascending broad and wedge top information right over here. You could also look at this as a head and shoulders. I believe it's already hit our measure move from it. So we spoke about this last night. Um, let's see where, where, where did this thing get down to? Oh, almost there. You know, close enough is close enough. Again, this is what I mean by that. It's not going to be perfect, but it does get you in the ballpark, uh, within about a dollar or a dollar and a half, whatever it might be. Again, good enough is good enough. And that, you know, that's already been hit. Um, I'd be looking for a retest somewhere around this 156 ish area. And that's probably gonna be a sell to me as well. Um, but I do believe that uh, I do believe that that Mr. Beedrow is probably topped out for now, uh, at the very least a local top. And I do think that this is probably gonna be probably gonna be the top of the rally, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, a couple a pair of rejections off the uh, 100 exponential right over here. If we maybe go to the three day, what does this one look like? Yeah, three days a little bit. Um, three day is less less nasty, actually a lot less nasty, but uh, but still got another um, still got another day for it to set itself in stone. What about two day right over here? Yeah, two day, two day looks like it wants to come down a little bit as well. Um, and essentially, you know, just, just basically reaching the last kind of swing wick over here from this consolidation period, test of that. And to reject off that, I mean, that would be, that, that would be kind of what you're looking for, for a retracement. Again, this is an event driven type thing. Uh, Mr. Buterall having an, uh, ha having a fork in, I think less than a week now. Um, and actually, and while that is not a free cone fork, um, there are two free cone forks before that. Um, so, you know, you're going to get the people in the, the, the less educated people who run off of emotions thinking, Oh my God, I need my free cones, bro, bro. Do you know? That Ethereum Classic Vision is about to give you th free three cones, three free cones for every Mr. Buterol that you have. You know what? They're gonna be they're they're valued at like three dollars each. Futures, 
that's insane. That's nine dollars, bro. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and I have five butyrols, so that's you know how much that is. That's almost fifty bucks. That's a steak dinner. Fuck yeah. <laughs> it's like all right, great man. But have you considered? <laughs> have you considered that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Never mind. You don't even. Need, you don't even need me to tell you. Um, but overall, uh, looking at me like uh, when, whenever you have an event like this, I don't like trading events. Um, what, what the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Um, <laughs> it's like my desk is shaking right now. What's going on over here? Uh, anyways, um, you know, when you do have those sorts of events, the bigger accounts, the money movers will typically, you know, drive up and play with people's emotions because they know that the retailers are less sophisticated and uh, and don't know how to deal with that sort of thing and can get caught in the FOMO, the, 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 the great human emotion of FOMO, fear of missing out essentially to to drive the prices up and now they have liquidity to dump on because all the people who who want their free cones and think that this the, this next fork, which has been scheduled for ages, people have known about it for ages. So if you've been making decisions on it, you know, ages ago when it was announced, then it's like that everyone else has the same fucking information. So it's, it's not that you had, you know, this, it's not, it's not like you have imperfect information where you have, you know, you know something that someone else does not. No, it's, it's very unlikely to be the case. Um, everyone, this is public information. So, <laughs> so it's it's price in is what I'm trying to say. Um, when when things actually do go live, if there you know if there's no problems, then people will say okay, expectations were met. What happens now? Well, I've already bought in. So is he gonna dump? Is he gonna dump? Is that big guy who has a million fucking butyrols gonna dump? Oh shit! I better sell, and then it causes a cascade. Or you have an actual problem with the fork, you know, maybe it gets delayed, maybe maybe there's an issue with it, and then the expectation is not met, and that's also a very very bad thing as well. Price action goes down as well. That's why the that's why the psych psychology behind these events is typically the same, almost always, almost always, and this goes for just about any event that that you see across any sort of trading asset, whether it's an announcement of an announcement or just a regular announcement, <laughs> depending upon what sort of cryptocurrency that you uh, that uh, that you look at, or or whether it's like an earnings report or or you know or or dividends for stocks or or conference call that kind of shit or you know we're we have a partnership by the way <laughs> which means that you just pay taxes to the chinese government um you know any, any of these sorts of things have very very similar uh, reactions you know also getting a list on exchange because it doesn't you know the world doesn't really change <laughs> i mean unless if it's like a true fundamentally changing thing which actually there is somebody said about mr buterall for that it is reducing the block uh, reward uh, a little bit um so that actually could be a counterpoint to what i'm saying but i think that a lot of this is event driven and uh to me this is not necessarily a bottoming pattern either people are looking at this and saying crown 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 there's big volume on these dildos over here that means bottom <laughs> capitulation well actually if you look at this this last dildo over here it's not so much um and if we can't and remember this is measured in coins traded not dollars traded so let's actually go look at the dollar value rather than coins traded value and let's see if that matches up if, if that looks anything impressive oh fuck I thought that this was going to be high. It's, see, it's no, it's nowhere near what it was in January when this thing was actually topping right over here. That's the kind of volume around there. It doesn't need to be exactly the same, but you know, around there, that's kind of what I'm looking for for an ultimate low being put in. Um, to me, this is still, you know, this, you know, it's it's looking like an impressive rally. Don't 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 get me wrong. And taking out the 20 month expansion for the first time in a very long time is good. Uh, but I'd still be careful with it. Um, so yeah, that's it for Mr. Buterall. Uh, if we go down to the lower time frames, I would be again. I, you know, I don't think it's out of the question that you get another try around this 156ish area. But that's probably gonna be a sell to me. Um, you do have support right over here, 149 and a half. If that area does break, not nothing holding you up from about 144 and a half. If that area breaks, and you got this area right over here. But overall, I do believe that this thing is likely coming down, um, more likely than going up. Just like Bitcoin, you know, kind of losing its stature as well. And because Mr. Buterall has been leading the market you know you'd imagine that when it starts to break down and this does look like a top information to me um then it does look like distribution as it, yeah th this is distribution um the way that i look at it that yeah okay yeah that uh that does match up yes um rejection right here is the is is the key factor actually um then it's probably gonna spill on over to bitcoin as well anyways go check out mr uh, light cone mr prince cone over here mr prince cone giving another run as well actually looking <laughs> funnily enough while while bitcoin does not look like any sort of uh, inverted head and shoulders to me uh mr light cone does <laughs> funnily enough this actually looks right it looks quote unquote more right um if, if light cone does take out 39 and a half dollars 
I, I don't see anything stopping it from about 40, almost $44 right over here. Uh, this does look a lot better, and uh, and I would be overall giving this one the benefit of the doubt as long as you're above $35. The second that you give up $35, though, very bad. Very fucking bad. But then again, you have to be asking yourself, okay, is Litecoin going to break out and, and do something completely different while the rest of the market is not? unlikely we just haven't seen that really in the past like sustained i mean obviously you know you have your one-offs here and there but typically things revert back to the mean my point is is that could bifurcation happen absolutely at some point it will but i need to see proof first before you know actually going towards that just like you know for for an actual bottom being put in for bitcoin i have you know a specific criteria that needs to be met before i go actually before i change my demeanor to actually bullish you know over over the longer period of time well, I mean, long, long term, I am bullish. Um, but uh, but again, you know, it's it's this is the difference between, you know, an analyst and a trader and just uh, moon boy. Moon boys will tell you that the bottom is in every fucking hundred dollars down and try to buy in it around that time as well. And I think Tony Vase is still underwater, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I keep on talking about him. Uh, spy over here. OK, so spy. Um, yeah. OK, so again, we spoke about this yesterday uh, to open up the day, kind of a little bit of a bounce off of this area right over here, it looks like. Or sorry, the eighth would start right over here. Yeah, a little bit of a bounce down. Looks like it does want to come back down and uh, down to about 252 is hitting our first area of resistance. I was as we spoke about yesterday. Um, again, I'm not uh, this. It's the same thing as Bitcoin. I'm. I do believe that lower lows are in order, but it's going to take some time. For now, it's bouncing. We've been speaking about this for quite some time. Everyone got bearish at like the literally the worst fucking time. Right over here, everyone starts like piling on the shorts. Again, it was the same thing as Bitcoin coming down to your 200 simple on the weekly. And then this one actually had a better reaction closing back above your 200 exponential. Um, and now, you know, I what it's it's now a game, the same thing as Bitcoin. Which resistance will it be? Is it going to be this guy right here, 254 and a half? Is this going to be the top of the rally? I think that would be a little bit too early. I'd say I'd say that I, I would not be leaning towards that. I think that it gets a little bit higher. We actually even tested this uh, two fifty seven ish resistance right over here yesterday as well. Looks like um, could that be it? Uh, higher higher probability, but the two sixty ish area right over here. I think that would be your more traditional sense. You're getting some pretty damn nasty crosses on your exponentials right over here. So I would be looking for um, a test of the ten. Let's see where the ten symbol comes in on the um, on, on the weekly total chart. Yeah, so that's gonna, that guy's going to start to hook around this two sixty ish area. So whenever if and when this thing does test a 10 simple that's probably gonna be the next big signal just like over here on the daily dodo death cross the green 55 cross on the downside of the purple 200 um you know uh, when it got rejected from the 21 right over here that was also kind of like the secondary signal saying hey it's time to probably definitely exit long positions and probably get short as fuck um so say, uh, same sort of mentality for the weekly but different you know different sort of setup right there um Again, I think that this thing probably it probably like chugs its way along most likely. Uh, everyone's you know it's, it's, you got you got to shake out the over aggressive the over leveraged shorts because so many the public just does the worst things at the worst times. And I can tell you when I when I was an actual trader on the floor of New York Stock Exchange Arca, the public would come in and just do the worst things ever. And that was honestly the best signal for actual big market bottoms and big market tops. Um, it it just I don't know what the fuck it is. It's just. <sighs> it's 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 almost a cheat code in the way that it works it was it, it, it was a cheat code in the way that it worked it was it, it was almost infallible and i know that sounds that sounds a little bit like aggressive to say that but you could make a living just fucking waiting for for a broker to come into the pit and say hey uh we got public over here uh 100 they're you know they're they're offering i don't know 10,000 contracts uh uh better than market right now do you want to do you want to sell do you want to do you want to um buy these calls off them or or sell these puts to them yeah i think i will and then the bottom was put in um you know that uh, that kind of shit. So uh, overall, for this guy, um, lower time frames. As long as you're above 251 ish area, uh, I would not be bearish right here. I mean, you're gonna have this this area kind of testing as support. Um, uh, to, I mean, I, I wouldn't be bearish at all until you break back below the 200 exponential and close below there. Um, basically, this area at around 240 ish area, but uh, 250 should be support if this thing does turn down uh today which it does actually kind of look like it wants to come back down a little bit um that should be support i'd look i'd be looking for a bounce right around there if it does break 251 then you got 247 right over here uh, but overall you know i i still wouldn't be necessarily bearish on this i'm sure people are calling this uh, a rising wedge um 
Uh, whoops, let's get this guy on, off, on, off over there. Um, but I, I'd be looking for signs of exhaustion before getting bearish on this, and you, you're not really getting them just yet. Uh, I'd be looking for some sort of you know bearish divergence on one of your on you know your RSI or something like that. Uh, one of your momentum oscillators, and that should that should be the next big tell. And right now we don't we don't really have that. Um, and and as I said on, on the monthly on the higher time frames, two sixty is certainly within question. I mean, hey, you might even get a wick up, up above there. That's the more traditional area I'd be looking for. Um, let's go check out Mr. Ripples, Ripple Me Timbers over here. And Ms. Mr. Ripples, I think has been a pretty damn honest chart. You know, while you do have these nice, uh, while you do have these nice wicks to the upside, they are just that. I mean, whenever you see a wick this long to the upside, that is really bad. Um, the fact that it, the fact that you have the three-day delta death cross right over here, and you're still using the 21 as resistance, and, and just very, very clear. I mean, look at this. Everyone gets very excited about each and every one of these drives up, and this is not like that's not good. It's not. These are all rejections so far. I'd be bearish as long as 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 long as you're below 37 and a half cents or even a little bit lower than that i'd be bearish i'd be i'd be very bearish on this um looking for probably back down to about 31 cents now if 31 cents breaks then you got you know then you got kind of a problem uh back down into the high 20s is what i'd be looking at but um you know overall uh I, it, it is concerning to me that the alt cones do not look good a lot of people getting very excited about stellar as well uh stellar is um, stellar Stellar looks well I was going to say, does it look better than Ripple's? It doesn't necessarily have the three-day dildo death cross just yet. And while it might might make another run at this 14 cent area right over here, I mean, look where this thing this uh, Overall, this is this is a better chart than most, but it's still not good. Uh, <laughs> it's, but, you know, you, you had this support trend line right over here. It gets broken when Bitcoin, I think this was when Bitcoin maybe broke 4,000. Uh, it's been retested once in, in a strong rejection right over here. Again, still looking to me like this is morphing into redistribution. Um, testing this, uh, hitting the measure move off this area right over here uh, just about. And so far rejecting off this, uh, what is it, 12, yeah, 12 and a half cent region. You know, I'm not... You know, I mean, if you do break above this area, I'd be looking for a test of this area right over here. And you probably do test that area at some point when you get the three day dildo death cross, assuming that you don't have a run up to above 19 cents in the next, you know, week. Things kind of unlikely, uh, but uh, I think that this thing very likely will be coming down. Um, you know, six six and a half cents is, is likely to be the next. Once you get that three-day dildo death cross, that could be the impetus for actually, you know, going back down to single digits, which yeah um again a lot of people very bullish on this i just don't I, I don't get it i don't i don't see what they're seeing um weekly over here i mean weekly doesn't this doesn't look good either um i, I yeah i i just don't i, I guess I'm, I'm always trying to see what other people are seeing uh to kind of come up with the bullish case I, I don't think that you know looking for another test up into this you know into that 13 cent maybe even 14 cent region is, is out of the question but this again very corrective very very corrective this i i, I don't uh, i think there's a lot of hope here. i mean this is a rejection right here on, on that massive volume spike that it's not good it's not good <laughs> it's not fucking good um by the way you know again is this is very reminiscent of what bitcoin's doing over here on the higher time frames uh basically just kind of putting in some time going sideways you know look at this area over here in the 2014 2015 mark cycle where bitcoin essentially you know put it you know it's, it had just come down what is this like 50 fucking percent you know off this drop right over here look at that 50 52 and a half percent we came down from 6,000 right over here. And how, how much was this? Oh, about 50% as well. Holy fucking shit. Again, they don't need to be, you know, perfect or anything like that. Um, but, uh, you know, everyone thinks that the bottom's in right over here. And, you know, you're going to probably spend some time going sideways, which we are. Uh, but look at the volume characters in relation to in relation to your parabolic cycle right over here. Just like this guy in relation to this guy right over here. When I'm actually looking for true capitulation, true you know bottom being put in, I want to see volume similar to what you did at your parabolic cycle right over here, compared with this guy, this this actual spike down right over here. Again, actual percentage move off the low, not good enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of blow through this because uh, you know it's uh, I, if you want like the full on look on this, go check out the long term analysis playlist. I go into much more detail there and show specific examples. But right now we're about 25% off the lows in four weeks, four fucking weeks. I mean that's that's not very good when you're actually talking about true capitulation right over here within within really just a couple of days you're up about 50 percent but by the end of the week it was up about 69 percent which is a great number uh within two weeks it was up literally 100 percent wick to wick uh did sell down after that no doubt about that but 
again, that's why I'm in no hurry to, to get in on a long position anyways, because when Bitcoin actually does put in a low, you're probably going to spend some time going sideways. So this is likely to take a long time. If you think Bitcoin is just going to V bottom out of here and be at, be back above 6,000 next week, it's very unlikely, I'd say. Um, uh, again, I, I mean, I think it's just a lot more likely that, that there's more lows to go and then you have to go through a period of, of, of accumulation like this, some, something similar to that. Um, but again, you know, it's the same sort of feeling as what you get over here. And again, emotional, emotional conditioning, it does count a lot more than, for, uh, for a lot more than I think most people give it credit for. In fact, I'd give it the most credit out of anything because this is what the charts are essentially telling us. And that is what is interrelated amongst just about any other, you know, trading asset because we're all, we're all humans trading these sort this, this sort of shit. So that's why you get these very uh, similar um, setups over over different uh, trading assets anyways um you know you you look at the percentage uh, gain off this again not it doesn't need to be perfect you know ju just like we looked at before but it needs to be within the realm and it's not um and again much more detail in the long-term analysis playlist but uh, uh as you can see that the 10 simple is getting so damn close to price action right now i mean the, if we were to test a 10 simple, which is actually around 42.50 ish area, uh, which would also kind of line up with the 200 exponential or a little bit higher than that, that would probably be a nice sell for me. So even if Bitcoin does break this onto the upside, that's going to be a big sell for me, most likely. 40 anywhere anywhere around 4200, 42.50 um, is uh, I'm going to be trying out a big trade. Uh, but for now, you know, as far as far as bottoms go, you know, volume's not there, percentage gains not there, and then time spent at the low is not good either. I mean, this is the, we spent about four days at the actual low over here. When Bitcoin puts in major lows, it it spends about an hour there, within about five percent, and then it rallies up again. Go check out the long-term analysis playlist for actual examples of that and what it can look like um, on this video. It's it's probably already too long. Um, anyways, uh, four hour wicking off the uh, the ten simple. So. You know, for me, it's a question of where does this this thing get stopped at? Do we get stopped at on this guy right over here? Um, that would be inconsistent with what GBTC is doing. To be fair, uh, but a possibility is that going to be the is that going to be the big trade? Um, could be. Uh, do, uh, uh, does it get that next leg all the way over here to 4,200, which would be kind of equal to this prior high over here, which is kind of what GBTC actually is doing right now, which would also align with our uh, our green 55 exponential, which would also align with <laughs> our weekly 200 exponential and also the 10 simple on the weekly as well, which we'll be getting ever so close. Well, that could be the next big trade as well. And then if that area does get taken out, then, you know, 45, 50, 40, you know, 4,900, 5,000 a share, you could be could, uh, could be in the works. But again, I'm not leaning towards that to be very, very clear. But as a technical analyst, as a trader, you have to understand where do you know where you're going to be wrong? Or at least I have to understand that because, you know, this is not financial advice, not financial advice, but I'm just kind of relating the way that I trade. Um, then I hope that that makes sense because it's just a statistical setup and you're not going to be right every fucking time. You can have the best technical analysis in the world. doesn't matter. There is variability. There is randomness. So you, you have to, you know, manage your risk. And I mean, there was, you know, uh, we, we had a great conversation, uh, great conversation yesterday in the discord. And, you know, there, if you, if you don't learn how to manage risk, you will lose all your money. You will lose quite literally all your money because you will, you're not going to, you're not going to know when to pull in a position when it goes against you. And if you don't do that, you're, I mean, the mark's going to take exactly how much you're cool with it taking. And you might think that, well, I'm not cool with it taking anything. Well, that's not possible. Um, and also that's not really a risk management thing to begin with. I will not sell at a loss. Well, good luck with that. Um, <laughs> it's not working out too well for a lot of people. Um, anyways, I think that's probably going to do it for today. Again, uh, lower time frames right over here. What I'd be looking at is do uh, do, uh, do, uh, does Bitcoin get stopped at this current level right here at around this 40, uh, 4, 000 area, 40, 50 ish area? Well, again, uh, next support would be down around here, low 3,900 100, 100 area. It, you, just by the fact of getting back down around there, I would not, I, I would say it's a, it's a pretty bad thing. But if you do officially break 3,900 and close like a two hour delta below there, then yes, measure move on this potential uh, symmetrical triangle could be, uh, is pointing you down towards about 3,300, which is kind of my overall view on Bitcoin. If it does take out this level right over here, then 4,200 ish area, give or take a few bucks, is going to be the next big area. And I will be trying a big trade out, out, out around there. Um, if that, if that that area gets taken out then then the game begins because now you you know now there's really not much stopping you from about 45 50 4600 if that area gets taken out then you know into 5000 you know 5000 is, is is a realistic possibility but i'm not leaning towards it to be very very clear but uh again 
that's kind of where the stakes are right now. Um, speaking of steak, I'm really fucking hungry. So it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely Tuesday morning. Um, I'll be back on later. I'm going to do a live stream a little bit earlier tonight. Uh, going to start at, I don't know, like a half hour or, or an hour earlier, depending upon when I get done with my gym session. But look forward to see you guys there. Um, hope this one finds you well. And if I don't see you later, well, I hope that you have the best day possible. So take care.